Hello and welcome to this session on intentionality. Intentionality as the fundamental property of consciousness. In the previous unit on phenomenology, we looked at the fundamentals of phenomenology as a branch of philosophy. We also understood how experience is transformed into knowledge by our structures of consciousness through various organizing principles like deduction, induction, etc. In this unit, we will try to understand the fundamental property of consciousness. This fundamental property of consciousness is known as intentionality. The philosophical foundations of phenomenology are as we saw in the last unit, the work of Edmund Husserl. According to Husserl, phenomenology is a philosophical theory of consciousness. In other words, it is the theory of intentionality. Intentionality states Husserl expresses the fundamental property of consciousness. He adds that all phenomenological problems are classified according to it. We ordinarily think of the knower or subject and the known or object as two entities and as externally related to one another in the world. At the same time, we recognize that the object is given in the experience, that the experience contains its object and that the knowing contains within itself what is known. From this point of view, the experience and the object are not just externally related, but internally united. How is it that our experiences or which occur within and are properties of subjects existing in the world contain objects that are external to it? How do we make sense of this self transcending and object containing nature of experience? It is on the basis of these two questions that the theory of intentionality of consciousness was formulated. By intentionality, we mean the ability of the human mind or consciousness to refer to objects in the external world. Husserl defines it as the peculiarity of our experiences to be the consciousness of something. The word intentionality comes from the Latin word intendio meaning to point to. It is used in the sense of being the consciousness of something. Each intentional event or act of consciousness can be said to point to or be directed toward something. Thus, intentionality is often described as the object directness of consciousness. For example, when we say a cat, our act of seeing is directed to the cat. When we remember that we will have to visit the dentist tomorrow, our act of remembering will be directed to this visit and so on. Other examples of intentional phenomena include desiring, hoping, judging, fearing, etc. In desiring, one expresses desire for something. In hoping, one hopes for something. In judging, one judges about something and in fearing, one fears about something. Our consciousness is intentional because it contains within itself a picture or an image of the object towards which it is directed. In medieval Latin, the term intentio meant a picture or an idea. When we see a car, our experience of it in seeing is mediated by an image or picture of the car in our consciousness. In other words, we use the image of a car already existing in our consciousness to make sense of the car we see. We know what we are seeing is a car because we have such an image in our mind. Mental images or pictures of course are not as clear as photographs. If we see a cat, the picture we have is clearer and richer in details than the picture that we shall have tomorrow when we remember our having seen the cat yesterday. Our seeing a real cat will also leave a clearer image than the one that is erosed in our mind by a story somebody tells about some cat we have never seen. The intentionality of consciousness is its capacity to receive images from the external world and also create new images on its own using these existing images. For example, somebody tells us about a strange animal he or she found in the Amazon forest which we have not seen. How do we make sense of this animal in our minds? We will first use the image or idea we have of an animal in our minds. If he or she says it is black in color, our consciousness moves to the next stage of processing. 
if they add such details like the animal resembles a tiger, our consciousness moves further until we have some image of the animal in our minds. By the time the person shows us the photograph of the strange animal, we would have some vague picture in our mind. This is how our consciousness constructs new images using existing images. It is important not to confuse the terms intentionality and intentional with a sense of common use of intentional as a synonym for done on purpose. When we say that our mental states or states of consciousness are intentional, we do not mean that such states are brought on purpose. We only mean that our state of consciousness contains an image of its object in the sense explained above. Brendano's influence on Husserl's theory of intentionality. It was Husserl's teacher Franz Brendano who introduced the medieval notion of intentionality into philosophy. The subsequent development of intentionality into a more complex set of theories was the work of his students. Husserl revived interest in the medieval notion that mental phenomena as he called them are intentional or directed towards something. He describes mental phenomena as characterized by reference to their contents and as directed towards their objects. Therefore, he adds, in presentation something is presented, in judgment something is affirmed or denied, in love loved, in hate hated, in desire desired and so on. Brentano took intentionality to the defining characteristic of the mental. He considered all and only mental phenomena to be intentional. It is here that Husserl differs from Brendano. Husserl's difference with Brendano can be explained this way. Brendano says that all mental phenomena are intentional, but it is not at all obvious that such mental phenomena as happiness, sorrow, etc. are always directed towards something. To begin with, one may be happy about something, one's happiness may be directed towards something. But after a while, the happiness persists without the sense of the object influencing it. In other words, one ceases to be conscious of any relevant object that makes one happy. The property of intentionality also does not apply to moods such as depression or euphoria and sensations such as pain or dizziness. Brentano considered all such states intentional and even suggested objects for some of them. Unlike Brentano, Husserl does not insist that every mental phenomena be characterized as intentional. He classifies mental phenomena into a hierarchy of simple phenomena like sensations and more complex phenomena like perceptions, intuitions and conceptions. For a detailed explanation of this refer unit 1 of phenomenology. He says sensations are non-intentional, but he also suggests that they are the first steps in complex intentional phenomena like perceptions, intuitions and conceptions. He also suggests that feelings and moods like depression or euphoria and sensations such as pain or dizziness are sensations and not really intentional phenomena. Thus, it is not in Husserl's scheme of things to impose intentionality on every object. His aim is to provide a general theory of intentionality for clearly intentional phenomena. He also uses this theory of intentionality as a tool to explain the role played by sensations and any other non-intentional mental phenomena in the study of complex events of consciousness such as perceptions. In this way, Husserl includes even non-intentional phenomena in the study of intentionality. Husserl's first detailed treatment of his intentionality appears in the first edition of his Logical Investigations published in 1900. Acts of Consciousness We begin with Husserl's theory that there are pure sensations and other components of consciousness that are not themselves intentional. Husserl refers to those mental phenomena that are intentional as acts of consciousness or more simply as acts. When we use the word act, we do not suggest that it implies any sort of activity. But this does not mean that acts are passive states. Acts of consciousness are phenomena that have been actualized in the mind or phenomena that are present to consciousness. Thus, for example, everybody remembers his own name and address, but these pieces of information are seldom present to the mind. They are merely in store, ready to be actualized when needed. Any mental phenomena that are not intentional are not acts. By an act, 
whose all means just that component of an intentional event of consciousness that the knower or the subject himself can discern by reflecting on his experience. This excludes empirical facts about the intended object and its de facto or actual relation to the knower or the subject. Perception for Husserl is a complex phenomenon. It is through the act of perception that he illustrates his model of intentionality. Husserl's act of perception is different from what we mean by perception in ordinary language. Terms denoting perception in ordinary language say for instance sees include several events. It includes the visual experience of something as also the physical or the causal relationship between the subject of the experience and the perceived object. Thus, when we say we saw the cat, we mean that we had visual experiences of the cat and also that the cat was a stimulus that stimulated our experience of it. In this sense, sees is meant to include a component that is outside of the visual experience of an object. This component relates to the physical or causal side of perception and includes more than that component of perception that Husserl calls an act. In ordinary usage, we often stress this physical or causal side of perception and exclude the experiential side of it. We only use the term C to make the point that it was the cat that became the reason for our visual experience of it. Thus, Sees is used objectively and non phenomenologically since it refers only to the physical relationship between one physical object, the cat, and another, us. Terms denoting perception can also be used in exactly the opposite sense. That is to say, we can focus on the experiential or phenomenological side of perception and ignore its objective side. When we say we saw the cat, we can mean that we only had visual experiences of the cat. What we saw is not important, it could be a cat or a rat. It is the fact that we had a visual experience of something that is significant in such a situation. This sense we call the phenomenological or experiential sense of the term sees. It refers to the experience of seeing as the subject himself would be able to describe it. This is what perception means for Husserl. For Husserl, terms of perception are used only in their phenomenological or experiential sense, since it is as experiences that acts of perception are said to be intentional. We must explain the intentional sense of terms of perception. Husserl states that an act of perception takes place when a subject or person consciously intends it. An act of perception also consists in being directed at or being related to an object. In other words, an act intends or is directed at or related to an object. It is in the act that the subject intends the object. Husserl calls acts of consciousness intentions. The object intended in an act of consciousness, he calls the object of consciousness. Husserl asserts that there are several kinds of objects of consciousness. Acts of perception such as somebody seeing his favorite shirt and tie or somebody remembering his childhood friend are directed to concrete physical objects or actually existing individuals. Other acts such as somebody anticipating punishment, imagining the color blue or thinking of the number 6 take as their object abstract entities. Husserl calls these abstract entities essences. He also talks about prepositional acts. One example is someone remembering that Mount Everest is the highest mountain peak in the world or that 10 plus 10 is 20, whose objects are more complex entities or prepositions. Intentional relations. The idea that intentionality of acts is their directedness to objects or the property or their being directed to objects makes out consciousness as a kind of relationship. The consciousness of something is an intentional relation between persons or acts of perception and various kinds of objects. Husserl writes in his book Ideas that all experiences in so far as they are consciousness of something are intentionally related to this something. In perceiving a lake, one is intentionally related to a lake which is a physical object. In judging that a tree is an oak, one is intentionally related to a concrete state of affairs about which one makes a judgment. There are several instances of relation between persons and objects that do not involve consciousness in any way. 
An example is that of tripping over and falling down or dropping a pen on the floor. Broadly defining intentionality as a relation to objects fails to capture anything that is unique to acts of consciousness. Theories of intentionality sometimes argue that intentional relations are made special by the objects of consciousness with which such relations exist. These are called object theories of intentionality. What makes intentionality a unique feature of consciousness in these theories is that intentional relations are relations of a unique sort. These relations are different from other non-intentional relations between persons and objects. Intentional relations are unique because the objects to which they are related are unique and different from the kind of entities that are part of non-intentional relations. There are also theories of intentionality that argue that does not have to do with intentional objects. Instead, it relates persons to ordinary entities and objects to which acts of consciousness are related. What distinguishes intentional relations from non-intentional ones is not the unique nature of objects, but the peculiar nature of the intentional relations themselves. Intentional relations between persons and objects in such theories are independent of the existence of the objects intended. The intentionality of consciousness does not require that there actually exists an object towards which the act is directed. Unlike non-intentional relations, intentional relations need not relate persons to existing objects. We cannot chase away a green dog or run like pink panther that is the animation movie character because there exists no green dog or pink panther in the real world. Nevertheless, our act of chasing away a green dog is as intentional as chasing away a white dog. Similarly, our act of running like pink panther is as intentional as running like Ben Johnson. This is because we can have a conception of a green dog and a pink panther even without them actually existing in the world. Remember that we discussed in the first section on how our consciousness creates new images with the help of existing ones. The conceptions of the green dog and pink panther are images that our consciousness creates. Intentional relations thus between persons and objects are based on a certain conception of their objects. In other words, an intentional relation between a person and an object can exist only in relation to the particular conception the person has of the object. Let us recollect the points we have discussed so far. In this unit, we try to understand what intentionality means and how it is structured as a fundamental property of consciousness. We saw that Husserl's teacher Brentano had developed the medieval notion of intentionality to show the object directedness of consciousness. We also engaged with Husserl's notion of intentionality and discussed how they differ from that of his teachers. We then discussed acts of consciousness and objects of consciousness. We also familiarized ourselves with different kinds of objects of consciousness like abstract entities and propositional acts. We then understood what the term intentional relations means. We also discovered that different theories of intentionality base intentional relations in different aspects. Please try to answer the questions here. Define the term intentionality. Give examples to illustrate the concept. Why is our consciousness is intentional? What does Husserl observe about sensations? Explain the conception based existence of intentional relations. How do object theories of intentionality define intentionality? What are the different kinds of objects of consciousness? What is perception according to Husserl? There are some books for your reference. The Way of Phenomenology, Criticism as a Philosophical Discipline, Richard M. Zanner, New York, Pegasus Publications, 1970. Phenomenological Explanations, Alfonso Lingis, Lancaster, Martinez Nijov Publishers, 1986. The New Husserl, A Critical Reader, Don Welton, Indiana University Press, 2003. Husserl and Intentionality, A Study of Mind, Meaning and Language, Woodruff Davis Smith and Ronald McLinder, Springer Science and Business, 1982. Thank you for watching this program. Have a nice day.